Hey everyone, this is Killian Thomas, or as I was previously known um, on this channel as a Big Brother Engineer. Um, but I've decided to rebrand my YouTube channel um, just because today I'm going to be going through a video on how to get an engineering internship. And I'm going to be showing you guys um, my profile and my experience. So I figured it might be better to just, I don't know, rebrand my YouTube channel to be my actual name. Um, so yeah, as I said, today I'm going to be talking about um, how to get an engineering internship. And um, the reason I'm posting this is because I think it's really important um, that there's some context around the channel. So the whole context around the channel is to teach young engineers in university how to get an internship and how to get a job and how to build their experience in order to do so. So obviously I'm posting CFT tutorials and um, I could possibly post some other tutorials with FEA. Um, but what I'm trying to do is give you guys the experience you need um, to get an internship or a job. Um, but when you get out of university because it is very hard to do when you don't have any experience if you spend four years in university without doing any extracurricular activities it's very very hard to get a job and um, straight out of college and um, so I'm, i, I want to help you guys as much as i can and um, because when i was in my engineering um degree i learned what i need to do to get the internship and um even though it was very hard i'd like to teach you guys what I did and what I would do different um, if I was currently currently going for an engineering internship or an engineering job. Um, so I have five steps here um, and let's go through it together. So the first thing you need to do, absolutely necessary, is to get experience and build your profile. I know it sounds counterintuitive um, and you might have noticed this if you started applying for internships or jobs, but most will say have relevant experience and this is the issue here it's a chicken and egg scenario you can't get a job if you don't have experience but you can't get experience if you don't have a job so what you need to do is demonstrate initiative and go out there and do extra projects for yourself and use them projects to get experience to then get a job so what i did was i'll go across to my linkedin now you guys are welcome to look it up and um, to sort of take a look at my experience and um, if that helps you you can see the first thing I did when I joined university is I joined the um, formula formula student team in my university or FSAE or what it's called um, in, in some other places and you guys might have Baja maybe in your university that's a good one too. The very first thing I did when I joined university is I joined Formula Trinity and then that helped me then at least get some experience. Now during that year I was just responsible for designing suspension wishbones uh, for the team. I was only in my first year of university so I I could only do so much in, in that first year and um, but it was well well worth it to get that experience and especially to get sort of a hands-on experience and to understand the difference between real life engineering and classroom engineering uh, i learned a lot in that year and i put in a lot of hard work and then my second year of university then i became assistant head of suspension and then that gave me a little bit more of a more responsibility and um, i went to the formula student competition um, I got to see all these other cars and it was a, that was a big motivator for me that uh, I, I should be working harder and maybe doing some more extracurricular activities. And then in my third year down in university, I was two years into Formula Student. I had some experience. I was getting some good grades and I was working very hard and I became head of suspension. And this was the year that I really, really got so much good experience um, managing people. I was managing a team of seven engineers um, I learned FEA, I learned so much in that year, way more than I could have been taught in university. Um, I learned all about CNC machining, um, how parts are made, how things are manufactured. It was a huge, huge experience for me. Um, so that was in my third year and I remember so well in my third year that I wanted an internship so bad. I would have done anything to get an internship. So what I did was I went on to Glassdoor, it's a website for jobs, and I put in every country in Europe um, that I could think of that speaks English um, and I applied for almost every engineering internship in that in that country so for example I typed in Germany applied for all internships Spain all internships France all internships um, and eventually I got one in the Netherlands at a company called Hubs so that's the job I have here and the reason I got this job is because when I went to the interview um, and the reason I even got the interview in the first place is I was applying with knowledge of CNC machining, knowledge of manufacturing, knowledge of materials. And I, the only place I would have got this um, is from my former student experience. If I was applying as a normal third year university student who didn't do any extracurricular activities, um, 
there's no way I would have got this job. And and that got me over to um, Amsterdam for three months work with a great company. And um, I got some really, really good experience then. Then when I came home um, here in February, 2021, I was doing some other extracurricular stuff uh, called the Space Generation Advisory Council. I was getting some mentoring. I was doing some side projects, which I'll show you here in my portfolio. So I would go and post the work on my portfolio here. And this is another recommendation. You should make a portfolio. Um, I was doing extra work outside and I was posting the work I was doing both in college and outside of college um, on my portfolio and, and this really, really helped me. So anyway, a little bit of a rant there, but going back here, get experience and build your profile. Um, what I have here is it, it, you can do brute force, but it will take longer. So what I mean by that is you can apply for 200 jobs with no experience and you might get an internship but I think your time is better spent getting experience and then it'll take you less jobs to apply for to actually get that internship. So for anyone watching this in university, as early as you can start getting experience. If you're in your later stages, you need to start doing things in your spare time like projects and maybe some online courses that'll teach you to code or FEA, CFD, go to my channel and, and start doing some practical examples and change a few things around to make an own project for yourself. Get that experience and it'll make the the applying process and the actual getting an internship process a lot, lot easier. Um, and, and the second point I have here is think about it from an employer perspective. When I was in my third year formula student, I actually had to accept students in. And that's when I started to realize, oh, now I understand why this happens. I know it seems unfair when you're in that position where you're applying for a job and you don't have, have experience and nobody wants to employ you. But if you were an employer and you had 50 people applying for a job, quite obviously you would pick the person that was most qualified for the job. So become that person. That's the best thing to do, all right? Um, join student clubs, teams, societies, um, but I would only recommend doing one. So for me, I focused all my energy on formula student for three years. And the reason why I say do only one and do it really well is because I became head of suspension and that's when I learned the most. So if I were in four different societies and I were just a normal member, it's not very good. But since I focused all my attention on formula Trinity, worked very hard, um, I got to a position where I learned so much and that was that was definitely worth it um, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, a side note is to ensure you do have good grades too, but in my opinion, experience is more important. Um, it's no good having 90% in all subjects in your university. I'd much rather have 70% and experience in a project or a side project, for example. Okay. Um, once you get that experience, then you need to reach out to your immediate network. So what I did was I, I wanted an internship so bad. I let everybody know that my, my parents, my friends, anyone I know who was even remotely interested in engineering, they knew I wanted an internship. And if they knew anything, they had to let me know straight away. So I, I reached out to everyone I know. I said, listen, if you know anyone that that's doing engineering, or I, I talk to people that I know are friends of friends that work in engineering companies, I said, Hey, it's just me, Killian, um, here's my experience. And um, if, if there's, if you're looking for an, uh, an intern this summer, please let me know. I'd be really interested. Thank you. So immediate network, easiest thing to do. Um, you, you could get a job from this and that's how a lot of people get their first internships, maybe with, um, their parents or with a friend of a friend. Um, and, and that's a good thing to do. Um, also family, friends, professors, old school alumni, anyone in your immediate network, you know, that's related to engineering, talk to them. Um, they might not have a place in their company, but they might know someone else who's hiring and um, just reach out and talk to people. It's the easiest way to get in. All right. Second step then is to write a killer CV. So what I did was, um, I researched how to write a good mechanical engineering CV and I just took a template online and I put in my experience and I might've put maybe a full weekend into this. Um, but in, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's worth it. So say, give yourself 16 hours, eight hours on a Saturday and a Sunday, um, research how to write a good CV and then write that CV. Um, there's not too much more to say here. It's not very complicated. Find a good template. Um, and another good thing is to change your CV to each job you're applying for. It's a lot of effort, but if you want an internship, this is how you have to do it. You don't have to change everything, but if you're applying for, say for example, if I were applying for a job for CFD, I would list my the, the subjects I did in college that are related to CFD. I was um, doing fluid mechanics, and I did aerodynamics and I did simulations or something like that. And I would also write in formula student, I would write about the experience that I had related to CFD. 
oh, I talked to the aerodynamics department about uh, this, that, and the other, and that taught me some things about fluid mechanics. If I were applying for a manufacturing job, there's no way I could use that CV. I would have to change my experience to, well, I learned about CNC machining when I was manufacturing parts. Um, I learned about materials. I learned about uh, how to operate a machine in university. So you can see that how there's a big difference here, especially if you're applying, when you're young and you're applying for a broad range of different jobs. Some might require coding skills, some might require CFD, FEA, materials, manufacturing. You're gonna have to change your CV for each of these jobs. It just simply doesn't make sense to have a cookie cutter CV to send to all of them, okay? Um, what else do I have here? Yeah, change your CV for each job you're applying to using the keywords from that job. Read the description, look at what skills they're looking for and ask yourself, okay, what have I done over the past three, four years in university that have given me these skills and write down what you did. I did a project um, related to um, a robot where I had to code things. And if they're looking for coding in the job, you, you write about that, okay? Step three then, create your portfolio. Um, and yeah, I. I had said before to create your portfolio, but I would do these steps in order. First of all, get your experience and then reach out to your, your immediate network because typically if you're reaching out to your immediate network, you don't really need a CV to get in. Somebody might just get you in. Then write a killer CV, then create a portfolio. Um, and then the last two steps I'll talk about make uh, applying for internships a habit and be consistent, persistent, creative, and a constant student. But going back here to create a portfolio. So I would only create a portfolio Obviously, you can't create a portfolio if you don't have experience or if you don't even have a CV um, and you haven't started talking to people and letting them know that you're applying for internships. So to create a portfolio, um, what I did was I used Notion and LinkedIn is good for a portfolio too, but to be honest, Notion is better. Um, I could make a whole video on it, but really just learn how to use Notion and create a little page or a website for yourself. Um, it should take no more than another weekend. Um, I just have about me, my CV, the work I did, and blog and research. So the most important one here is my work. So I talk about what I did in Formula Student. I go in here, some pictures, a little bit of description about what I did. Uh, the pictures are probably the most important thing. Um, it, it just, it really, it really says a thousand words and have a little description beside it. Um, some teaching lectures I did. Um, this is a good project I did um, over Christmas one of the years. I had to learn composites um, before I was working with a new company. So what I did was um, I basically spent a few weeks learning about composites and then I wrote a MATLAB code to predict the strength of composites. So you can see I have a document here. I was doing some calculations and I made sure that my code calculated the stress and deformation of a uh, composite sheet the same way that um, theory did. So. These are examples of projects that you can do yourself right now. You don't need a team. You don't need um, a university form of student team, uh, a badger team. You can do these projects yourself if you get a bit creative or maybe find some things on YouTube or just have a little think about it. Um, I have some certificates. I, I, um, I did some SOLIDWORKS certificates and also the research, a research project I did in university. Uh, I did this project in university too. So you can add things that you did in university too, but I would encourage you to and do some projects yourself, get a bit creative and post them, post your work on your portfolio. And then when you go to an employer um, and you send them this website right here, you can see how you stand out to a person that just went to university and didn't do any projects or any extracurricular experience. You can see it right in front of you. It, it speaks a lot of a lot of words and a lot of volume. When you've got pictures and, and words, and it, it's very evident that you're interested in engineering and that you want an internship bad. It, it really does speak a lot of words, okay? So create a portfolio, it will be really useful. Another side tip is when you're applying for jobs, um, employers won't have time to go through your full website. So if I, if you're applying for maybe a manufacturing job or a CFD job, what you could do is write a two page portfolio in Word and basically put pictures in and words in about your relevant CFD or FEA experience for that job. So if I were applying to a CFD job right now in my position, what I would do is I would maybe take a screenshot of the YouTube videos I posted and say, oh, I'm teaching other people how to use CFD. I would maybe post some pictures about the projects I did in university. And I would talk about some industrial CFD experience I did and put that in a, in two pages, pictures, very little words, I would say. And um, employers simply don't have the time to read it all. Put, all, put it all in, have, prove that you have the experience and um, that will speak a lot of volumes and definitely help you get a job. And then step four then is um, 
make applying uh, for internships a habit. So what I did was, um, I'm not sure if I had a particular habit and time that I did it, but whenever I had spare time, I would spend maybe an hour, two hours, um, definitely the weekends, and I'd apply for um, internships. It's just, I wanted one so, so bad. So um, as I told you before, what I did was I looked up um, top English speaking, com uh, top English speaking countries in Europe. Uh, I went from the, the top of the list down and I just put that country into um, Glassdoor and I applied for all the internships. So maybe in start with your own country, I would say first, it's going to be a little bit easier. Um, but go to your country, type it into a job seeking website, low list, maybe 50 internships to apply for. Um, and you, you say to yourself, okay, I need to apply to all 50 of these. I'll make it a habit to apply for five a day because uh, you're going to have to custom your CV, maybe write a little portfolio piece. Um, cover letter it, it does take some time but just make it a habit it's much better to apply to five internships for six days a week than it is to apply for 50 in one day and then never apply again and um, just make it a consistent habit especially if you're going for a summer internship in the May months maybe you got to be starting in December getting your CV ready and, and start consistently applying to a certain number of internships every week while also building your experience okay so become a fanatic for applying for jobs and if you get a spare minute, you're applying for internships. Um, don't limit yourself to your country. As I said, I, I applied to a lot of countries in Europe and develop a system, maybe on the weekends or as soon as you're done your college day, you say, okay, I'm gonna do one hour of applying for internships and then I'm done. So develop some sort of consistent system that's can, that you can stick to is important. Don't do it for one week and then stop. It's, it, you wanna be consistent with it. Uh, and then step five then, be consistent, persistent, creative, and a constant student. So these are character traits that really will help you get a job, not just for an internship, but uh, as soon as you're done this internship, obviously the next step then is maybe get another internship, a job, um, maybe you might apply for a PhD, um, you might do some other things in your career. But being consistent, persistent, creative, and a constant student are character traits that will help you um, throughout your whole career. So. Be a creator, not a consumer. And I talked a little bit about this in my portfolio. If there's not a formula student team in your university, make one. If there's a project you'd like to pursue, but you don't have an opportunity to do it, make that opportunity. I'm interested in rockets, so I do a lot of research in my own time on rockets, and I post blog posts about what I learn. So being creative and coming up with ideas and trying to help other people learn is gonna help you rather than looking to consume content and constantly consume consume you want to be the one creating the content and creating the opportunities okay and um, do what i do start a youtube channel start a cfd youtube channel if you want to learn cfd teach people cfd these are opportunities you can make for yourself okay and face problems that is how you learn so i get a lot of emails as well nowadays about people that are um, struggling with with the videos and they're looking for help on maybe how to solve a, a certain problem their cfd solution diverges they've no idea what to do uh, i get emails I, I simply don't have time to reply to them all but when you spend the time uh, doing a cfd solution or doing fea or whatever it is in engineering you're doing spend the time going through the pain of trying to figure it out on your own and once you figure it out on your own on your own you will learn a lot so there's plenty of simulations I've done before where um, it might diverge. And like, for example, I was doing a rocket one recently. It diverged all the time. I had no idea what was going on. I'll sit there and just try, try get it right for a long time. And that's what teaches me the most um, rather than just looking for the answer straight away. It's just not how you learn. Really, you have to go try things, struggle. And then eventually when it clicks, you say, aha, I finally got it. That's when you actually learn. Um, so I would really encourage you guys that when you face problems and um, when it comes to your, your projects or experience or your internships, just go through the struggle and, and learn rather than looking for the solution. You don't really want the, the easy solution. You don't want every simulation to go right. That's not how you learn. You need to go through that sort of pain period. And, and that is when you will learn. All right. And be consistently learning and teaching. I think they're two of the most important things um, if you want to be have a successful career is be always learning things, always curious, and then always be teaching other people um, about them things because that will help cement that knowledge in your mind, okay? So hopefully that really helps you guys um, with getting an internship and also with getting jobs. And yeah, I wish you all the best and I'll talk to you in the next one.